Hi, welcome back to Anatomy Channel and uh, today we shall continue abdominal wall where we are going to study about rectus sheath and fascia transversalis which are related to anterior abdominal wall and uh, blood supply of the anterior abdominal wall only by superior epigastric artery and musculophrenic artery. Uh, these two are the branches of internal thoracic artery. From inferiorly the anterior abdominal wall muscles are supplied by inferior epigastric artery and deep circumflex iliac artery. These two are the branches of external iliac artery. So we shall begin with the re rectus sheath. Uh, rectus sheath, uh, it is a sheath covering the rectus abdominis muscle and it has got the anterior wall of rectus sheath and posterior wall of rectus sheath and uh, which envelops the rectus abdominis muscle and this anterior and posterior walls they are derived from the other uh, muscles present in the anterior lateral part of abdominal wall that is external oblique internal oblique and transversus abdominis and uh, the anterior wall of rectus sheath we can see here it extends all through the length of the rectus abdominis muscle anteriorly and it is anchored with the muscle through the tendinous intersections. So anteriorly it is firmly attached to the rectus sheath via these tendinous intersections. <coughs> Posterior wall of the rectus sheath, it is deficient in its upper and its lower part, where they are directly related to the uh, coastal, costa, coast, coastal cartilages of the ribs and above to the coastal margins, posterior wall is deficient and below a line, the line is arcuate line, arcuate line is a line present below the midway between the umbilicus and pubic symphysis is the arcuate line. So, below the arcuate line, the posterior wall is deficient. So, let us see the uh, composition of anterior and posterior wall. Uh, anterior wall above to the level of coastal margins. Here, anteriorly it is formed by the external oblique muscle. The only muscle forms above to the coastal margins is external oblique muscle and where it runs in front of the rectus abdominis and inserts into the uh, xiphoid process. And posteriorly the muscle rests directly on the 5th, 6th, 7th coastal cartilages. And in between that is below the coastal margins and above the arcuate line, the anterior wall is formed by the external oblique muscle and also a lamina from the aponeurosis of internal oblique muscle. So the internal oblique aponeurosis splits into two lamina. One is the superficial lamina, the other is the deeper lamina. Superficial lamina runs along with the external oblique, aponeurosis of external oblique to form the anterior wall. And posterior wall is formed by the posterior or the deeper slip of the internal oblique and lamina of the internal oblique and transversalis abdominis the aponeurosis of transversalis abdominis posterior to it. So these two will form the posterior wall of the middle part of the rectus sheath. Below the arcuate line, the posterior wall is deficient again. The anterior wall is formed by the all the three muscles that is exter external oblique aponeurosis which runs separately to merge with the linea alba and uh, internal oblique aponeurosis and transversus abdominis aponeurosis these two aponeurosis merge to form a single sheath which runs anterior to the rectus abdominis muscle to merge medially and posteriorly the rectus abdominis muscle rest directly on fascia transversalis so this that is about the composition of rectus sheath and let us see the contents of rectus sheath. Contents of rectus sheath, uh, it is the main content is the rectus abdominis muscle and there is a small muscle present in its lower part of rectus abdominis called as pyramidalis. So these two muscles are the contents and coming to the blood vessels, the artery superior epigastric artery which is running from above, uh, it enters in pierces the rectus sheath uh, between the coastal margin and the diaphragm uh, near to the xiphoid process. So it enters to supply the rectus abdominis. 
an inferior epigastric artery runs in front of the arcuate line from below and both these arteries ends up by anastomosing with each other and there are venae committentes superior epigastric venae committentes and inferior epigastric venae committentes which run along with these arteries and the nerves are the lower six thoracic nerves uh, are and the main function of this rectus sheath uh, it preserve, prevents undue bowing of uh, rectus abdominis muscle so it strengthens and gives more support to the rectus abdominis muscle anteriorly because there are no bones present in the anterior part of the abdomen to protect the internal organs so that is the main function to strengthen the rectus abdominis muscle Okay, let's see about the transfer, fascia transversalis. Fascia transversalis is the fascia which is present deep, deeper to the posterior wall of rectus sheath and it runs all along here. This is called fascia transversalis. For the uh, fascia transversalis is present deep to the anterior abdominal wall and it covers uh, the abdominal cavity and it is deeper to it is the peritoneum and which is separated from the peritoneum by means of extra peritoneal connective tissue and uh, in coronal section the fascia transversalis it is above continuous with the diaphragmatic fascia which is present just below the diaphragm and inferiorly it is continuous with the fascia iliaca and further down it continues to form floor of pelvis that is pelvic fascia and anteriorly it adheres to the linea alba to the anterior abdominal wall and posteriorly it uh, continues with the thoracolumbar fascia here we can see this is external oblique muscle internal oblique muscle and transversus abdominis muscle and fascia transversalis lies deep to the transversus abdominis and further when it reaches on the posterior side this is the transverse section taken on the posterior side showing the posterior abdominal wall and it continues with the thoracolumbar fascia this is anterior and posterior slip of thoracolumbar fascia superiorly here the fascia transversalis continues with the renal fascia covering the kidneys and uh, Further, the thoracolumbar fascia continues to form the fascia covering the psoas major muscle which is called as psoas fascia. And uh, fascia transversalis, uh, the abdominal vessels lies deep to the fascia transversalis and nerves lies so superficial to fascia transversalis. And fascia transversalis continues below in the thigh as the femoral sheath, anterior wall of the femoral sheath where we can see the femoral vessels are inside the femoral sheath and femoral nerve is outside the femoral sheath. That's how it explains the fascia transversalis. The arteries, are pre arteries and veins are present deep to the fascia transversalis and nerves are present outside the fascia transversalis. And the opening present within the fascia transversalis is the deep inguinal ring uh, which lies just lateral to the inferior epigastric artery and uh, it is approximately 1.2 centimeters above the mid inguinal point and a spermatic cord passes through the deep inguinal ring in men and in females uh, round ligament of uterus passes through it. So the fascia transversalis continues as spermatic fascia around the spermatic cord and in the thigh it continues as anterior wall of femoral sheath. Dissected cadaver showing the anterior abdominal wall and here we can appreciate the anterior wall of rectus sheath which is covering the rectus abdominis muscle on one side. The other side the rectus sheath is reflected and removed to expose the rectus abdominis muscle. And we can also appreciate the external oblique, deep to which internal oblique. Deep to internal oblique, the transversely running muscle is the transverse abdominis muscle. Hernia. Hernia is an abnormal protrusion of abdominal contents is called as hernia. Hernia is of two types, internal hernia and external hernia. 
internal hernia abnormal protrusion within the abdominal cavity from its normal place is called as internal hernia external hernia it protrudes through the anterior abdominal wall out forming a sac and is called as external hernia and external hernias various types we can see in this uh, picture showing umbilical hernia protrusion er, uh, around the umbilicus which is often congenital and uh, epigastric hernia which is a para umbilical hernia and uh, incisional hernia is uh, seen uh, in the individuals who had a history of uh, surgery so the incisional hernia is common along the line of incision and which is the weaker part of anterior abdominal wall the other hernias are inguinal hernias which is direct and indirect which would we would discuss along with inguinal canal and here in the thigh upper part of the thigh we can see the femoral hernia i hope you all like my session please like share subscribe and press the bell button for further notifications